All right, next we're going to take a few notes on compounds. And as you can see, compounds are groups of elements. So compounds can be decomposed. You take a compound, that more massive substance, you decompose it into two smaller substances. That's a compound. Uh, for example, take two elements, hydrogen and oxygen, two that we are familiar with. The two elements of hydrogen and oxygen can be grouped together in a chemical change and they can form the compound water if they are grouped together in a specific proportion. If you group them together in a different proportion of hydrogen to oxygen, you end up with hydrogen peroxide, okay? So here's water. Here's the compound water. It is made up of hydrogen and oxygen in a specific proportion. However, if you were to combine those elements in a different proportion, you would, you would end up with something different. This is hydrogen peroxide, which can be purchased at the grocery store and is not quite so refreshing as water. You would not want to drink this. However, it is used for cleaning things like uh, cuts even in your skin or sometimes clothing, fabric. So that's right, a scientist came up with this rule of these definite proportions that elements must combine into. And it is called the law, the law of definite proportions. Okay, the law of definite proportions says that the proportion of elements in any compound is always the same. The proportion, or like a ratio, the proportion of elements in any compound is always the same. Okay, so for example, hydrogen, you might be thinking, wait a minute here, Mrs. Wong, hydrogen and oxygen, you just told us could combine into water or hydrogen peroxide. So these two elements don't always combine in the same proportion. You're right. Read the law very carefully. It doesn't say that elements always combine in the same proportion for any compound. It says for a specific compound, the elements always combine in, the in, a, in a definite proportion. So for example, while hydrogen and oxygen can combine in two different ways, if you are talking about water specifically, you're always going to have the same proportion of hydrogen to oxygen, okay? If you're talking about hydrogen peroxide, if you're talking about this specific compound, the hydrogen and the oxygen are always going to combine in the same proportion. So this actually helps chemists in uh, different experiments and lab things that they're doing to sometimes figure out what compound they have because they can look at the comp they can look at the proportions of the different elements and say oh these are combining in this proportion so it must be compound A rather than compound B for example so that's the law of definite proportions oh yes let's give credit where credit is due this came to us in 1794, well it didn't come to you and I did it, but it came to those that were living in 1794, by the fabulous chemist Joseph Proust. Thank you, Mr. Proust. Uh, and let's have an example here. Okay, so for example, eight grams of hydrogen can combine with I'm going to say actually 8 grams of hydrogen 
for every one gram of oxygen will result in or will produce water. Okay, for every eight grams of hydrogen, there's gonna be one gram of oxygen in water. Okay, so let's say we have 800 grams of hydrogen in water, in this water sample. Uh, how, much, how much oxygen would we have there? How much oxygen? We would have 100 grams of oxygen. So in water, there's always this definite proportion of eight grams to one gram. Hydrogen to oxygen. Okay, so that is how the law of definite proportions plays out for water. You can think of it like a recipe, and actually I'm gonna put that in your notes here to help remind you it's like a recipe, okay? Say you're making a cake for, I don't know, say your chemistry teacher because she loves chocolate cake and white buttercream frosting. Mmm, delicious. Okay, so you're making a cake, you know that you need two eggs and one cup of water for every one cake mix. But you think, one cake is just not enough for my chemistry teacher. I want to do more for her. I'm going to I'm going to make her two cakes. So what would you need for your recipe? You would need four eggs, two cups of water, and two cake mixes. Ah, don't forget the two jars of buttercream frosting as well. So that is the law of definite proportions. Now in your textbook, I want you on your own to look at and study figure 3.1. It's a long figure. So you're gonna be reading in this figure and understanding the law of definite proportions. This is on page 78, goes on to 79 and page 80. And when we come back, we're gonna go over example 3.2 together to make sure that you're really understanding this law from Mr. Proust, circa 1794.